Hi. Welcome to snowy Colorado. I'm Scott. I'm Lisa. And we're by the campfire again. So we had a whole plan for this video. Uh, we were going to do a little bit of a series of hidden gems in the Denver metro area. We were going to go for a hike today in Roxboro State Park and you know, show you the mountain goats and the beautiful hike. And it's the start of the Colorado Trail. Really nice, cool hike. Well, well maintained. Um, and we've done it before. We love that hike. But we woke up to pouring rain this morning. And by 9 o'clock, it was snowing. We ended up with how much? Yeah, probably a good three inches. Maybe four. Maybe four inches. Most of it was melted. It was a lot of rain beforehand. So a lot of it didn't really stick too much. Eh, I can still see snow on roofs out there, but it was too nasty to go out and, and hike. So we had to regroup and we decided that we're gonna focus on the most common questions that we get asked when we tell people about this plan to go full-time RV living. So I have a list of questions that are the most common and then um, just a little bit of sewing. I wanted to show you what I did with some of the fabric that I sorted through last weekend. So hang in there. Uh, we're going to start with our Q&A session here in just a minute. Okay, question number one. Well, the first question people usually ask is, are you guys going to retire? Did you guys win the lotto? No, we didn't win the lottery. And no, we're not going to retire either. We're going to still keep working. Um, for me, I'm the catering and event manager at Picking Out Smokehouse here in Colorado. And then, uh, so every every May or so, April or May, I'll, we'll come back to Colorado here and I'll come work the, the summer season and the wedding season and caterings and events um, until uh, the fall. And then once October comes around, uh, we're, we're gonna take off. And my job, I work remote. Um, I do go into the office once a week. The good news is that we have offices. The company I work for has offices all over the United States. So we're going to be focusing our travels uh, until we do retire. Yes, eventually we're going to retire. Eventually. Eventually. Uh, I have about three years, maybe four, three is kind of what I'm, I'm planning on. So until then, we're gonna focus our travels on all of those states. But like I said, the good news is there is a lot of states uh, that we haven't seen yet that we're excited and a warm, warm weather states. So during these cold winter months, we're gonna be chasing sunshine, chasing 72, 80 degrees. Uh, today, I wouldn't even mind 90. But um, I'm just looking out the window with the snow and the cold. And uh, we had the air conditioning on yesterday. And then sometime in the middle of the night, I think we had to had get to up, heat up and flip it over to heat because it started getting cold. So um, that's, that's the common question about retirement. Um, fortunately, I, have, I, I work for a great company and can work remote and... I think you mentioned something about, isn't there like uh, a Facebook group, like Temp Chefs or something that you can do? There's a, there's a couple of websites and face group, Facebook groups that deal with uh, chefs on the fly, uh, chefs, uh, it's a chef life. Uh, people, they just uh, need chefs and cooks and catering people for uh, specific jobs all around the country, so. That would be a another really big one for me if I can find the right spots, of course, where we want to go and mm -hmm. where we need to go. And that's that's the big thing for us. But you know, there's also you know work camping jobs. Uh, we belong to a couple of Facebook groups about mm -hmm. work camping, and uh, that's something else that can be done in the in a pinch. If I'm not able to find something right off the bat, there's always uh, those types of jobs that I could do as well. Well, we've talked about chasing like festivals, like uh, he found some jobs at the uh, Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta, uh, maybe Quartzsite. I know they do a lot of food trucks and food tents in Quartzsite in January. Uh, then you've got the Tampa RV Show also in January. And fortunately, I have an office in Tampa. So uh, we've got, you know, we've got 
We have iron, quite, quite a few options. Irons in the fire, is that yeah. how the saying goes? Right, that's so. It. All right, the next question that we get asked quite frequently, um, it's a concern of our kids and our family is, what will you do if you have truck or RV problems because this is now your home? Well, that's a, that's a valid question and one that we worry about often. Mm -hmm. But we're buying this RV, it's a brand new RV, from Brinkley and we realized that every RV and every fifth wheel they all have problems it's it's a it's a house in an earthquake moving down the road so we've set aside a pretty good nest egg to help us mm -hmm. uh, for any issues that could possibly arise um, but and there's also going to be things that we're going to have to learn to do ourselves yeah. Yeah, that's the that's the big thing, you know. Uh, I'm not the most mechanically inclined, but he's gonna be. You gotta push yourself to to get better in life, and you know you gotta. I have to push myself to do things that take me out of my comfort zone, and uh, this is certainly gonna take me out of my comfort zone. It's also one of the reasons we bought a Brinkley was because of their customer service and the way they stand behind their product. Um, we know that there's going to be problems. Absolutely. And there could potentially be problems where we have to take our RV into a shop and it's there for an extended period of time. And, you know, like Scott said, we, we have a nest egg put aside for, for issues. Um, you know, some of these things we're going to have to play by ear. Uh, if we have to get an Airbnb for a week or so, if we have to rent some place to live while our RV is in the shop for a month or more, that's what we're going to have so to do. Good. So, uh, it, again, this one's going to be play it by ear and just see how it goes. All right, another question uh, that we get. This one's not quite as common, but what do your kids think of this idea? So mm -hmm. what have the kids said? Yeah, it's... They, they're they very supportive of us. Yes, very they're supportive. very supportive of us. But uh, they're also uh, concerned, you mm -hmm. know. It's a, it's a big step. And, of course, we're kind of leaving. So yeah. we've, never, they, we've never had to do that before for any length of time. So that's kind of a tough pill to swallow, I think. Um, I had to do it many years ago when I left California for Colorado and um, that was a tough, tough step, but you know, it was a good step. It was a growing step and everything, everything's for a reason. And I think uh, we're doing the right thing. And I think they just want the best for us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would agree. Um, you know, we've, we've had requests to, you know, we've never towed anything, let alone an RV. So we've had requests from our oldest to you know take some classes when we get the rv and learn how to tow it and park it and drive it and all of that stuff um yeah the, we have really not heard anything negative from the kids uh no. you know our middle daughter and son-in-law and two of our grandkids are in south dakota so they're really actually very excited because they know that they're probably going to see us more than they do now um the other two the oldest and the youngest are right here uh, with just within 30 minute drive from our house. We see them quite regularly uh, and our oldest granddaughter is here. So even our granddaughter is very excited for us and, and just so supportive. Um, coming over and helping us with the purge or the downsizing of items. <laughs> um, just so excited that we're gonna take this journey. So uh, it's one of, the, one of the reasons that I wanted the RV with a bunkhouse. It's more of an office. It's going to be primarily used as an office. I'll use it as a sewing room as well. But we can also sleep some of the kids there. Right. So whether or not they'll come very frequently, they probably won't have the opportunity to. But any chance that, that they can, 
I know they'll come see us. If we're in some place fun, maybe we're in Yellowstone or Seattle or someplace like that, the kids can come and, and stay a week or a few days. So yeah. that was that was one of the big motivating factors that in my job, having an office for that, that bunkhouse. So, um, so that's the most common questions we get asked. There's a few others, but they don't seem to happen as frequently. And I think we've covered most uh, in our responses. But um, I do want to take a few minutes and just talk about, you know, we're going into this with our eyes wide open. We are not viewing this as just an extended vacation, no. uh, that it's going to be fun and games all the time, that it is going to, we're not going to have a care in the world. That is not anywhere in our thinking. We, no. we are being very realistic. We have done extensive research. We watch other full-time RVers. We, we know what can go wrong. We know the challenges. Um, but let's talk about some of our, our most common fears and worries and concerns. So next up, you hear what, we're, what keeps us awake at night. Okay, I'm gonna talk about my number one. Um, I don't know why this is number one. I guess it's always number one. Uh, money, that's my that's my biggest one. Uh, and we're doing, we're, we have built a nest egg. We're continuing to add to that. We will continue to add to that on the road as well. Um, you know, I, I have a retirement account, but I'm not gonna touch that until I absolutely need to. And, you know, that's, it, it's, it is a fear that what if something catastrophic happens? So that's one of the things that, that is my biggest concerns. What about, what's your number one? Mm, well, right now, my number one is taking possession of that Brinkley 3610 and the truck that's going to go with it. <laughs> Those are the two biggest things that weigh heavy on my mind. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I believe we've done the right research. I believe we've taken the right steps, but we still have a few more weeks before we can pull any triggers on uh, either one of them. So, but it's coming close. So I gotta stay calm, keep my mind focused. Um, try not to let my anxiety get the better of me and uh, try to keep plugging along and keep making forward steps and progress in the house and uh, getting everything uh, that we need for the rig ahead of time. You know, that's uh, one of the things we're doing now is starting to shop for things. But the, those two things, the actual signing of the paperwork for both of those, to get those done and completed or my the things that give me the most anxiety right now. Well, and we've we've stacked this very tight. We really have because the RV comes off the line May 28th. But then they have to go do all of the the testing and inspecting and all of that stuff and then transport it here. So it's probably going to be second week of June, crossing our fingers Somewhere when it here. gets here. Um our lease ends on July 1st. So as of July 1st, we don't have a place to live. So we're not buying the truck until the RV gets here. And I know, I know that it sounds crazy. It's crazy. But in all of our research and all talking. The advice, advice that we've <laughs> been given from uh, people in the business and people that uh, yeah. deal in RVs and recreational vehicles, uh, this seems to be the correct way to do it. It's for a couple of reasons. You know, if for some reason something happens with the Brinkley 3610 and we don't, we don't take delivery of it, you know, I, I, I know I'm, I'm, tr I'm practically inventing problems, but what if we end up getting something smaller, right? Um, and we don't need the, the one ton truck that we're going to need for the 3610, or we keep hearing that um, it's best to get the RV loan first and then the truck loan. So we're kind of holding out for that. Um, 
we haven't talked to our bank yet. I think that's one of the steps that we're going to take is talk to our bank. We've been there with, with them for a long time. And maybe just go ahead and if we secure the loan with them beforehand, I think that'll take a lot of stress off of both of us. It'll certainly take a lot of stress out. And uh, plus it'll also give us uh, some some ammunition for negotiations uh, with the with the with the dealership. And then the next one, um, campsites. We we're going to be staying in the Denver metro area until October first, and this is a camping haven through the summer months. So. Um, I I know that we'll work it out. That one doesn't cause me as much stress. I have researched, I know that there's several hip camps. Um, some of the campgrounds have openings. Um, we've booked what we can. We're gonna, we need to get our feet wet with the boondocking. Yeah. Um, that's the way we've always camped. We've never really camped in campgrounds. So when you're talking tent camping, we're very experienced with boondocking. Uh, that causes us a little bit of stress is, are we gonna have enough solar? What kind of generator are we going to have? Are we going to be able to to sustain ourselves in a boondocking situation? So um, we will have to practice that a little bit too. Yeah. But I think other than that, we're ready to go. I think so. <laughs> For the most part, you know, there's going to be a a few other things. You know, the the other thing that worries me is the maintenance of the rig, and so that's something that's completely foreign to us yeah so that's something new and something that we're we have to learn and yeah. it's gonna so that's that creates some anxiety but it's i don't think that's anything neither either of us can't or aren't willing to do no so. and we'll learn we will that's for sure and hopefully not make too many big mistakes catastrophic right mistakes. right <laughs> Well, thanks. Um, I know once again, we're sitting at a table and you're watching us just talk, but uh, the weather kind of prohibited anything else today. So um, I'm, we're going to end the video with me th sewing. So I'm, you're not going to have to watch me sew for a solid two hours that it took me to put these this bag together, but I thought it might be fun just for you to see how I use the fabric and one of the patterns. Um, I'm, you know, I liked what how it turned out. So um, Me too. Stay tuned for that uh, at the end of this video. And thank you all for all 41 of you subscribers <laughs> for following us, for watching our videos, um, and for your support because every one of you have supported us in one way or another um, just by watching our videos and and talking to us on a daily basis about how excited you are for us. So, And if you guys have any questions... That's Finn. He's done. <laughs> right. He says no. <laughs> Time to go. If you guys have any questions uh, for us, please put them leave, in the comments. Put, them, put a comment out there. Yep. Right? We'll, we'll, we'll answer those. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, if you think we're crazy or if you think this is just amazing or if you're or jealous. What, what else would you like to see in our videos? Because we're kind of running out of ideas until we get the RV. So uh, <laughs> what else would you like to see? All right. Thank you so much. And um, like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Okay, I have all of my pieces cut out. So one of every piece of the blue and one of every piece for the white. So I'll be making two bags, but then the two bags will get stitched together. So. I'm going to start piecing them and be back in a minute. All right, front and sides of the bag are done. So now I'm going to go ahead and attach these to the back. All right, front, back, sides all together. It's time to put the bottom in. So I'll get the bottoms in both of these and check back in, in just a minute. Okay, the bottoms are in. 
Now I'm going to stitch these two together and put the trim on them and they'll be done. And this one's done too. So I have one more to knock out for the bedroom. I'm going to make another one of these for the kitchen. And then we'll see where we sit after that.